Hello everyone. Welcome and thank you for joining us for today's webinar, Amplifying the Faint Signals of Risk, brought to you by IOFM and sponsored by Apex Analytics. We have just a few housekeeping notes to go over before we officially get started today. If you have any technical questions or issues using the WebEx platform, please use the chat box and I will respond right away. If you have any issues with audio, please click on the phone icon above the chat window to receive the teleconference information. For those that do call in, to ensure call quality, everyone's lines have been muted today. If you happen to get disconnected at any time, you can log on again using the instructions provided in your webinar confirmation email. If you continue to experience difficulty, please email webinars at iofm.com and we will respond as soon as we can. We encourage you to ask questions throughout the presentation. Please type your questions into the chat box and hit send to submit them. At the end of the presentation, we will have our presenters answer your questions, but please don't hesitate to ask them throughout the webinar. This webinar will be recorded and you will receive a thank you email with the on-demand materials within two business days. And with all of that out of the way, I would like to introduce our speakers for today. Uh, first, we have Mark Brousseau, president of Brousseau and Associates. Over the past 26 years, Mark Brousseau has established himself as a thought leader on accounts payable, accounts receivable, pay payments and document automation. A popular speaker at industry conferences and on webinars and podcasts, Brousseau advises prominent end users and solutions and services providers on how to use automation to improve document and payments driven business processes. Brousseau has chaired numerous educational conferences and has served on several industry committees and boards. He resides in Center City, Philadelphia with his wife and three sons. And we will also hear from Danny Thompson as senior vice president of market and product strategy at apex analytics. Danny is responsible for defining communicating and leading their company's software product strategy and roadmap. He works closely with customers to ensure that each solution helps them meet their business objectives. Danny has a proven track record in the procure to pay arena with a strong background in ERP implementation, process automation and financial shared services. He previously was vice president of product management at Tungsten Network, a global business to business e invoicing firm. He is also a formal form, former global process driver for invoice to pay at Pfizer. And at this time, I would like to welcome our speakers and hand the webinar over to Danny. Welcome, Danny. Uh, thanks, Kelsey. And uh, it's good to see you again, Mark. Um, look forward to talking with you throughout this session. Uh, and uh, for everyone that is attending today, thanks for coming. Um, we're gonna spend the next hour um, Talking through the supplier risk, supplier threat landscape that large companies are facing, uh, what companies need to take into account to assess all of the various important known areas of risk, as well as areas of risk that may be bubbling up that they don't have visibility to yet, and also technology that kind of makes all of this possible. So those are the high level areas we're going to go through and there'll be a little bit of a rhythm to it as we uh, show technology and threats and the appropriate responses as we go along. Uh, before we get into it, though, I just want to take a second to uh, let you know a little bit about Apex and our client base. Um, Apex uh, is a provider that's been around since the late 80s. And uh, over 250 companies, really Fortune 1000 and Global 2000 companies mostly, the largest companies in every vertical, um, they're, they're protecting over $9 trillion in annual spend using Apex Analytics products. Uh, what are those products? Well, 
Well, uh, it's a range. In in the er, in the late eighties, we started out in the AP recovery audit space, uh, and uh, the the first supplier management product that we introduced was all about performing. Uh, overpayment audits for large companies, identifying cases where they've maybe paid invoices twice or uh, overpaid for invoices and it use a, a bunch of advanced data and analytics tools and professionals to go engage those suppliers and recover those overpayments. Uh, about 10 years in, uh, we one of our clients said, hey, it's great that you're recovering this money after the fact, uh, it, it'd be even better if you sold us your software and let us catch these overpayments before they go out the door. And so that's what we did. We introduced this first strike product, which kind of revolutionized the, the recovery audit space by letting clients get out ahead of everything. And just the rule of thumb here, companies are finding about $2 million in overpayments that slip through the clock cracks of their normal uh, controls for every billion dollars of spend that they have using First Strike. Um, after, uh, over the years, we added some fraud prevention technology and uh, other supplier management capabilities. But in a, about 2015, we went to our customer advisory board and said, what's a problem that you're having in the marketplace that uh, you can't find an appropriate solution for. And they said, you know, we don't have a solution that's really helping us nail global compliant supplier onboarding for all of our business units, for all of the countries they're in, our suppliers are in and we operate in. And um, that uh, is smart enough to uh, apply our own internal compliance rules as well. And so we collaborated with our clients and created Apex Portal that they now use to not only onboard and manage master data for 100% of their suppliers, but they're also uh, collaborating with suppliers around invoices and payments, early payment offers, they're managing risk and performance, and uh, other uh, important collaborative opportunities with suppliers. Uh, they're using also, ESG Enterprise, uh, which is a company that we acquired earlier this year, but we've been partnered with for a couple of years now. This uh, clients are using the, the ESG Enterprise solution to deal with uh, the their needs to measure, manage, and report their ESG and greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, they're managing supplier sustainability projects and uh, collaborating with suppliers to ensure that they're uh, compliant with global regulations. And then all of this is built on top of a, uh, a solution called Smart VM, which is integrated with all of these that clients can use to validate and append data to their vendor records and predict supplier behavior. So those are the, the main topics uh, or main products that clients are using from Apex. And the one that we're gonna focus on today, really it's, it's the last two of these, uh, you, using Apex portal to manage risk with some ESG thrown in. So with that said, let's get into the world of supplier risk. Um, so uh, the, the quote that is excerpted on the middle of this slide is from one of our pharmaceutical related clients. Uh, it's uh, a, a gentleman named Gerard Cardillo from Charles River Labs, uh, who is over procurement there. And we were talking last year about just the crazy world that we've been through over the last three years. And, and he said, you know, the biggest challenge for us has been um, that not only have there been a, uh, a, a bunch of disruptions in the procure to pay space, all of which were anticipated, but they all came at us more rapidly than ever before. And 
while most companies were prepared to absorb some level of disruption, none was really prepared for all of it and the, and, uh, the unpredictability of, of what was going to come next. And um, so, you know, we've learned from that experience and we can introduce new controls to address any potential recurrence of uh, shipping disruptions or war or ship shortages or ESG. But what keeps me up at night is what's coming next that we haven't anticipated and we're not anticipating. Uh, we're really looking for a solution that's going to help us get an early warning of what that next threat is. So we need something that's going to to help us manage all of our current known risks. But what about the unknown risks? How do we become aware of them as soon as possible? And the reason that companies are, are looking to uh, manage all of this risk, especially emerging risk, is Whoever is first to identify and respond to that next threat or next series of threats will uh, create a huge competitive gap between themselves and their competitors. Uh, by protecting their supply chains, they'll protect their own business and even have the opportunity to take business away from their competitors. The problem is we don't know what we don't know. So that's the supplier risk management solution that we've been building in collaboration with our clients. It's a supplier risk management solution that not only monitors and manages the full spectrum of known risks, but also uses AI to provide early warning of emerging risks. So, um, so what do we mean when, when we talk about the full spectrum of supplier risks? Uh, to get a feel for that, we took a look at uh, some research that Gartner published last year, and uh, this was in their market guide for supplier risk management solutions. And in that article, that they identified seven major risk factors that leaders need to be monitoring and managing. And uh, they need to monitor all of these areas on suppliers across supplier types. So you can't just focus on cyber risk monitoring of IT suppliers or just financial risk of financial or manufacturing suppliers. You need to be monitoring both areas for both. So for example, if your raw material provider uh, has systems that go down to a ransomware attack and so that raw material provider can't deliver to you, you're in trouble. Or if your IT provider has great cybersecurity in place, but due to financial problems, they go belly up, then your own critical IT infrastructure may go down as well. So these are the areas of, of risk, of known areas of risk that people need to be managing. Um, so how do you know whether these risks are in your supplier base? How do you know, uh, how do you monitor for these sorts of risks? Well, the short answer is um, you've got to digest a lot of different data sources to understand the risk across those areas. Our clients, uh, your peers tell us there's an equally broad range of data sources that, they, that have to be taken into account at least these seven categories, uh, data that you as procurement risk or finance leaders have under your own control, data you might need from your suppliers or third parties, data on the web, and uh, even data that your peers may have about your suppliers. All of these are important and ignoring any of them could leave you vulnerable. So that's a pretty big statement and a pretty tall order. If you're like me, your first reaction is, how could I possibly monitor all of these data sources across all of these risk categories? Where can I find the data? Where, how could I boil the ocean of all this data down to identify the material risks? 
And once I find risks, what do I do next? How do I how do I manage improvements and work with suppliers to to mitigate any risks that come up? So that's the challenge we've been working on with our clients. And uh, together, we, we built a solution to, to do just that. Uh, it's the Apex Portal Risk Management Solution. And uh, as it's developed, it's consolidated more and more. Uh, and now it's, cons it's covering all of the appropriate risk categories and data sources, all in a single threat dashboard and risk management system. It's uh, integrated to the entire supplier lifecycle. So uh, every, all the way from supplier discovery and supplier onboarding through continuous monitoring. And to make it all workable, it's, it's touchless. The monitoring is going on in the background and it only engages the risk managers or suppliers at the appropriate time. So it engages suppliers when new information is needed from the suppliers and it engages the risk managers when new material risk is identified. And uh, so it provides the risk manager an alert. The risk manager can then follow that alert to, to drill down into all of the backup details required to understand any risk and, and then supplier collaboration functions inside the solution uh, provide the, the necessary collaboration with suppliers or other internal users or even third parties to reduce the risk and improve performance over time. So uh, here's how it works. Uh, it starts at the beginning with supplier onboarding, supplier discovery and onboarding, you have to start out by knowing who you're doing business with. And with automated supplier onboarding, this solo solution performs fully automated KYC, so you know who you're doing business with right from the start. For example, is the supplier who they say they are? Are they on any prohibited vendor lists? Uh, all of the data is validated in real time. Your policies get communicated, and if you need the supplier to, to sign those policies or upload their own documents uh, attesting to uh, anything that you want them to say they're, they're doing, um, data security documents, et cetera, insurance documents, all of that is captured and validated before you start doing business with the supplier. One of the, the more uh, important areas of risk that people are dealing with right now is, uh, is fraud and securing bank accounts and bank account changes. So we've worked with clients to, to build a multi-layered bank account ownership validation that, that includes everything from robust portal access controls all the way through to integration with a consortium of banks or, or in some countries, governments to confirm whether the supplier is the actual legal owner of the bank account that you've got set up to remit payments to. And in, in, uh, to cover areas where we don't have positive confirmation because the data is not available, we have confidence scores on uh, whether the bank account is appropriate for the supplier based on uh, where we see that supplier, what bank account we see that supplier using with other customers, as well as our, our, is, is the bank account in question being used for other suppliers. Uh, so between those two things, we can give you a high level of confidence of whether the, the bank account that someone has entered in as the supplier's bank account is actually confidently uh, used for them or whether you need to do a little bit more due diligence. So that's data that's coming across the APEX community. Another interesting area that people, uh, that's important during the supplier onboarding process is insurance compliance monitoring. And uh, until now, 
companies have had a, a manual or maybe partially automated process for collecting PDF certificates of insurance from their suppliers. And, you know, the role of, of, of suppliers at business insurance is to transfer risk and liability from you to your suppliers as appropriate. And the problem with this PDF partially automated or fully manual process is, is twofold. Suppliers can forge certificates of insurance pretty easily. Um, and uh, even if they don't, if they give you a legitimate certificate of insurance, uh, they can their their coverage might actually change over the the designated life cycle of that insurance policy. They could contact their agent and change their coverage amount, or they could fail to make insurance payments. Uh, either of which leaves you exposed. So what we've done in this touchless solution is we've taken insurance compliance monitoring a step further by instead of asking for a PDF from the supplier, we're integrating with Certificial Smart COI network to obtain detailed insurance coverage levels directly from insurance agencies. And then we continue to get that coverage level throughout the policy life cycle. So if an exception arises, you, the supplier and the agent all receive alerts so you can triangulate to, uh, to resolve the gap. And if the gap isn't closed in an appropriate amount of time, then the system can automatically put the supplier on hold and, until it gets resolved. Um, so after a supplier is onboarded, it's important to monitor risk on an ongoing basis. And with this screen, uh, the solution gives you overall threat levels for all suppliers or maybe all suppliers in a given supplier segment. And uh, it shows the highest risk suppliers as well as those are trending in, in the wrong way, um, whether at, the, at a composite risk level or within any given risk category. Drill down on any supplier that's on the previous screen or any supplier you can search for, and you see the supplier-specific risk dashboard. And uh, if you look over at the, uh, in the center, you see the supplier's composite risk. And on the left, you can see a, uh, a bunch of uh, individual scorecards covering important areas of supplier risk and performance. This is a subset of the available scorecards that come out of the box, but uh, all of these scorecards are highly configurable. And uh, so they can be adjusted to uh, the, the questions and attributes that you may want to, to uh, focus on. You can pull in third party data, you can add new scorecards and the scorecards and scoring methodologies and line items on the scorecards can vary based on supplier segment. If you click on any one of the risk categories on the left, like in this case, it's the fraud detection scorecard, then in the, in the middle, you get all of the individual attributes that are part of that scorecard. In the case of the fraud scorecard, it's over 30 attributes that get composited together. And if you click on any one of the line items, then over to the right, you get to see the backup details associated with that individual attribute. So um, here's a case where there's an employee supplier match. There's a, a vendor who has uh, either the same bank account address, phone number, or name as a, as a supplier or one of their dependents. Um, and uh, this can be set up so that you come in and review the scorecard whenever you want, but most likely what's gonna happen is if a supplier's individual attribute or overall score or, or trend crosses a threshold, you get an alert, you follow the link, and you get to go look at, at the detailed data supporting 
the alert. This is another important fraud control. Click on it. It's a, um, it's a case where we're tapping Apex Community Intelligence to let you know that there's an alleged fraud associated with this supplier somewhere else in the Apex Analytics community. So one of your peers has found a fraud associated with this vendor. That doesn't mean you're experiencing fraud with them, uh, but you should maybe pay a little bit closer attention to the supplier. Next is a financial risk scorecard, and um, this can uh, be comprised of a, a bunch of different things. You can see we have, we're reading in a D&B credit scorecard. We have media monitoring, uh, a finance questionnaire that the supplier completes, and you can even have another uh, third-party data source. Anything else that you, if you have a other credit score providers you want to include in the scope of your financial risk scorecard that can be added as well. So uh, instead of giving you detailed information on the right, you, can, you get drilled down to the actual DNB report on the right if, if you want to use DNB as part of this assessment. Um, media monitoring, we uh, there are a lot of negative news monitoring solutions out there in the world. But this uh, is a media monitoring capability that's integrated into each of our individual scorecards. And um, we worked with our clients to make the negative news really operational for them by using natural language processing to filter the news to identify news items that indicate risk within uh, the given scorecard category. So uh, we're filtering to finance risk indicators associated with the supplier. And then the, the AI reads through the articles and assigns sentiment scores to each of the articles and provides you links on the right to all of the, all of the selected articles. It creates a composite score across all of those news articles, which then becomes a line item on the financial scorecard. And, and this monitoring here and on the other scorecards can really help you identify something that's happening in the news or in social media chatter that suggests a, an emerging risk that you might not have uh, scored otherwise on the scorecard. Well, uh, the next topic is ESG, and I know especially for finance leaders, um, there's been a, a rise in uh, ESG issues as, as a, a task for you to try and handle. Um, either investors or your leadership has come in and, and made promises to the investment community around uh, ESG and working with suppliers to improve sustainability. There are new regulations that have been put in place and you're tasked with addressing some of this with the supply base. And so um, to help with that, we've integrated uh, a scoring methodology to help you identify which suppliers are compliant with global regulations, are doing a really good job on the ESG categories that are important to you, and maybe, uh, and the ones that you may need to work with or investigate further to determine whether there's an issue. And uh, one of the, the great things about the solution that we've put in place, and why we purchased the company ESG Enterprise to um, build into our solution is, is a, a great method for rapidly scoring suppliers, evaluating suppliers through a pre-screening process that uh, takes industry standards to evaluate a supplier when you may not have deep information about a given supplier. So we call that inherent risk, and, and we can create inherent risk scores for suppliers in real time. And 
then trigger a process that harvests, harvests the supplier's public reports about ESG, if they have any, as well as pulling in data from other data sources around ESG issues related to suppliers to create a, a supplier-specific assessment rather than a, a, um, a, an estimated assessment based on country and industry. And then for the suppliers that you've identified uh, a, um, a high potential impact or a significant risk, then you can trigger a higher level of direct collaboration with the supplier to uh, refine the scoring for them, make sure you really understand what's going on with that supplier, and then manage through uh, an improvement project if, if it's appropriate. So uh, that scoring is baked right into the same dashboard where the report is fed into the same risk dashboard as the other risk areas. Key pieces of data are pulled in as attributes uh, for you to view individually and potentially trigger alerts for you based on what's important to you. And then you have drilled down to the, the full, it's a 20 or 30 page report to, to get into the details of what their specific greenhouse gas emissions might be, how much water waste they have, uh, any social issues that might be related to the supplier. All of that is uh, captured in this solution. So looking at the next risk area, let's talk about cybersecurity. I mentioned it earlier, and uh, one thing that we've learned is, depending on you, who you ask, somewhere between 40 and 90% of all supply chain disruptions have a cybersecurity component to, to them. And uh, to, to talk about the cybersecurity area, we really think uh, we're, we think about two areas of risk that you should be monitoring for. One is are the the suppliers' public-facing websites uh, vulnerable to attacks? Are they uh, do they have the latest security patches? Are are their emails compromised? Those sorts of things. But there's also another area that you need to be monitoring, and that is threats. And, and those threats are usually only detectable on the dark web, where criminals are sharing passwords, sharing customer lists, sharing compromising information about maybe company leaders. Um, and uh, it's only on the dark web where you can begin to detect uh, the steps that lead up to a ransomware attack. And so the, the cybersecurity monitoring that, that is built into the Apex Risk solution is looking for both. It's doing uh, a real-time vulnerability assessment of supplier web-facing systems and then scouring the dark web for indicators of coming attacks or uh, other negative behavior that might be going on there. And so very similar to the uh, ESG model, ESG scoring model, some components from a detail report get pulled in to the risk management dashboard, but then there's drilled down to all of the details in an attached report as appropriate. Now let's talk about a, a problem that really people became really aware of during COVID with all of the transportation issues and concerns about disruptions in different countries. And that's the problem of not only do you need to be worried about risk associated with your direct suppliers, but also your suppliers' suppliers. And in this picture, what we're showing is a company that's in the Chicago area that has four direct suppliers of uh, a particular item that they're, they're buying. And so they feel like they're in a pretty good situation because they've diversified to some offshore manufact or off offshore distributors and manufacturers and one that's onshore. 
But if you map their supply chain back, the raw materials that are going into the goods that, that they're receiving are all coming from a single supplier in Africa. And there's opportunity for them to instead have uh, products coming from four other suppliers around the world that could help them uh, reduce their risk. Because the way the system is now, even though they think they have four diverse suppliers of a given good, if this one man, this one mining company in Africa goes down, their whole supply chain goes down. So um, companies are struggling to figure out how to get back to, to this multi-tier supplier and assess the risk of not only the concentration of uh, their supply chain, but what are the risks associated with that tier two supplier that that are uh, maybe damage uh, risk to reputation uh, or um, uh, standing in the world regulatory requirements. Uh, there, there are two ways to get at this tier two data or tier three data, and that is you can ask your suppliers who their suppliers are. But that's a huge challenge for companies because suppliers often are slow to respond or don't even want you to know who their suppliers are because they don't want you to bypass them. So companies are using uh, some innovative techniques like monitoring customs data, uh, shipping documents, bills of ladings uh, that are used for rail or truck freight to uh, to discover these tier two and tier three relationships in their supply chains. And so we have uh, partnered and are building the database to support this mapping. And we've integrated that uh, multi-tier supplier mapping right into the risk dashboard. So, and we do that in a couple of ways. One is uh, a scorecard that is dedicated to multi-tier risks for all of the major scorecards that we have. We score every supplier in the uh, supply chain all the way down and then roll up those scores weighting heavier for the tier one or tier two suppliers and less for the, those that are farther down the supply chain. All of this is configurable so you can set the thresholds and weightings as is appropriate for you. And you can run this on all of your suppliers or a subset of suppliers that are the most important to you. We've also integrated these, uh, this multi-tier scoring. It can be added into any of the major risk categories as well. So your financial scorecard could include a line item that uh, lets you roll up financial risk from all of your down, downstream suppliers um, into the into the supplier's primary financial risk scorecard. And you can drill down on any supplier at any node in the supply chain map and get a similar scorecard, overall scorecard for them as well. All right, so um, I've given you an idea of some of the scorecards and some of the unique uh, risks that get monitored by the system. And so the next question is, after I've identified a risk, what do I, what do, I do next? And the, the risk module includes a supplier case management, issue management, mitigation project planning function uh, that allows you to pull in individual risk items that maybe you've identified on the risk scorecards or that you've just uh, identified on your own. You can create a group of those line items here as and just a, to document the issues that you're trying to deal with. You can invite your suppliers to participate in the project to mitigate that risk, or you can keep your mitigation project internal. Or if it's fraud, maybe what you're doing is you're conducting an internal investigation to confirm the fraud. Uh, either way, uh, you, you can assign tasks and objectives 
alerts go out automatically to engage all the stakeholders at the appropriate times. They can respond, uh, create additional action items, upload documents, and essentially collaborate around driving to an improvement uh, associated with any risk that you've identified along the way. And then there's a dashboard, of course, uh, that covers all of the active investigations or investigations or cases that have been closed out and what the outcomes of, are, of those are. So it just gives you a high level overview of all of the risk mitigation activity that's underway and what the outcomes were. This is all selectable um, by supplier segment or business group or um, maybe the, uh, the owners or uh, assigned members of any of the projects that are trying to mitigate the risk. So you can show your whole company or individual groups or any subset of suppliers on this dashboard. Picking a step out, a lot of technology was um, brought together to make this whole system work. Um, and uh, everything from uh, a, a over 300,000 global business rules that cover compliance and regulations around the world, as well as standard business practice. It's an infinitely branching and multi-tier approval process and uh, supplier journey process that's built into the system and a lot of global regulations, uh, external data sources, over a thousand external data sources that are integrated in real time with the system so that you can uh, monitor for supplier risk. We've got our database of 90 million golden records for suppliers, uh, a bunch of other topics that we've covered. Uh, one thing I didn't mention before was diversity. So, uh, uh, for a lot of people, uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion programs are important to them, or maybe they're important to their ESG programs. We've, to help companies with that, uh, we've integrated with over 100 diverse supplier listing uh, organizations so that we can help you identify suppliers who are in diverse categories. And with that data, you can identify diverse spend that, that is already part of your supply chain. Uh, and you can also uh, encourage suppliers who may be diverse but aren't registered to go get certified. And to, to the extent that it's appropriate, you can help make sure that diverse suppliers are being included in your sourcing activities based on the data that we have integrated into the system. It's all uh, a highly automated, highly secure solution. We have standard integration for SAP, Oracle, and uh, the other main ERPs, as well as a standard integration that can be connected to any homegrown ERP as well. Uh, the integration with the ERPs is bi-directional, so we've got master data going back and forth, invoice data that can go back and forth, we can uh, help you put in suppliers or invoices on hold or release those holds as appropriate given the risk profile or activities associated with the supplier. And uh, as it relates to supplier onboarding, included in the system is a native master data management solution so that if you've got multiple ERPs on the back end, the system takes care, it's aware of those ERPs and takes care of uh, allocating supplier records to the appropriate ERPs uh, based on which business groups they're doing business with. Uh, and it creates fully formed vendor master records in those ERPs uh, that are in the right structure and um, have in the right format to uh, work properly in the various ERPs. So, um, just winding up, um, what, we're, what we've been working on with our clients and uh, what you need uh, to be able to anticipate risk that's coming in the future is you need a world of data. 
You need automation to digest all of that data and flag up where the, the risks really are in, in that whole haystack of, of uh, risk data. Uh, and then automation to help you manage the process going forward to mitigate or re resolve any issues that get identified in your risk monitoring process. All of this should help you create a competitive edge against your competitors by helping you address risk, especially emerging risk before that risk impacts your company. Of course, we'd be happy to talk with you about any of this, any specific areas that you may want to be monitoring or managing, uh, anything related to supplier onboarding or invoice or payment collaboration around your, su your supply base or any of the areas we talked to at the very beginning as well related to uh, audit and overpayment monitoring as well. So with that, I think uh, we'll, uh, I'll turn it over to Mark to manage the Q&A process. Absolutely, Danny. Before we dive into our Q&A, we have a poll question, which is about to be displayed on your screen. We want to know which of the following areas would you like more information on? Select all that apply. Would you like a free copy of the Gartner Report, How to Navigate the Fragmented Supplier Management Solutions Market? Would you like more information on payment fraud protection? Who wouldn't? Who would you like more information on automated supplier onboarding and management, on ESG solutions, or managing certificates of insurance? Take a moment and respond to the poll question now displayed on your screen. And remember, you're welcome to select all of the areas that you'd like more information on. And that brings us to the Q&A portion of this webinar. If you haven't already submitted your question for Danny, or if you've thought of another question for Danny, go ahead, use the chat tool on your screen to submit your question to me now. We'll answer as many questions as time allows. And a few of our attendees have already gotten questions in, Danny, so buckle up and get ready. <laughs> Our first question up is from Emily. She writes, is this subcontractor nth supplier applicable to only suppliers of goods or can it be used for suppliers of services as well? Great question. It's applicable to uh, every supplier type. Um, the, the key is, um, you know, how, what, what is the way we can discover that multi-tier supplier relationship. And so in some cases we can get it from shipping data. In other cases, we can get it from uh, data reported by the suppliers themselves. And then sometimes we we're, we just become aware of it because on our network, we have so many suppliers and buyers interacting with one another. So, so far, those are the main ways we've found for identifying those relationships. Bruce wants to know whether your automated bank account ownership validation solution supports international accounts or just domestic ones. Yeah, great question. So it covers uh, the U.S., uh, Switzerland, Sweden, Poland, and India right now from a positive confirmation of who owns the bank account perspective. In the U.S., it's not covering 100% of accounts yet. The system that we're working with it covers about 60% of U.S. accounts. Um, so those are the, the positive confirmation um, uh, countries. Globally, uh, the solution includes uh, the, the network community data component where if we have seen that supplier doing business with other customers uh, across all of the data that we have visibility to, um, that gets applied to every supplier. So if a supplier has submitted a bank account to you and we see that same bank account being used by that supplier for other clients and they've been using it for three years to make successful payments, then you can feel really confident about using that bank account going forward. If nobody else is using that bank account or 
Uh, that bank account is being actively changed across multiple customers uh, in, in real time, then some more due diligence would be required. Uh, we're continuing to expand that uh, range of countries with positive confirmation. We're on the verge of having Canada, UK, and Ireland. Frank writes in, who are your target clients? We're a small foreign bank in New York, and your system seems to be targeted at large industrials. Uh, great question. We are, uh, we've traditionally targeted companies that were, say, uh, 500 million, 750 million and above. But I will say that um, later this year, we'll be uh, releasing a, a solution that could be appropriate for other sizes as well. Sasha wants to know what's involved in integrating your platform into an ERP. Obviously, you mentioned some of those direct connections. Yep. If that's not the case, what happens? Yeah, so, you know, the, 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 the process varies. Um, like, for example, I mentioned SAP. In the case of SAP, which is the most commonly used ERP in large companies, we provide an SAP certified transport that provides that connector between uh, the, the platform and SAP. So all of the data exchanges happen automatically using that. So it's pretty, pretty easy to implement. Um, and then we have standard integration for some of the other ones. But the, uh, in, in, if you're not one of the ERPs that we that I mentioned, we have something we call our, our secure open adapter, which is a, a standard integration that supports batch and API data exchanges. Um, and they uh, we just work with you to to map your system to the standard integration and uh, then support you in the uh, operations of that interface on an ongoing basis. So it's, a, you know, it's something we do every day. I think we're integrated so far to about 30 different of those uh, one-off ERPs. Rich writes in, does the portal have any data sources out of the box? Or do we have to have separate licenses with each data source, such as Dun and Bradstreet? Yeah, so we have about a thousand data sources that are available out of the box. A uh, thousand? In the case, yeah, yeah. Uh, so it's pretty, uh, and, and some of these are small. You know, it could be integration with the Latvian government to validate tax IDs. Um, for Latvian companies, you know, that it could be that level of detail. In some cases, it's address books for every country in the world. Um, but um, uh, some of the major data sources like D and B, we have, uh, it depends on what D and B information that you want. So for example, parent child information we can provide through our, um, one of our integrated data sources. If you're wanting the DNB credit report, then uh, it's usually people are bringing their own license uh, to the engagement and we're just happy to integrate any outside data source that you would like. Uh, you just might bring your own license in some cases. You know, but um, mo the vast majority of the data sources that you'd be using would be out of the box. I've heard of BYOB. BYOL is a new one for me, Danny. I always learn yeah. something when I talk to you. Matt writes in, one of our suppliers recently went out of business and it created a lot of issues. Are you monitoring for businesses who are on the brink of financial disaster? How's it done? What's the time frame to get notified? <laughs> yeah, well, there are lots of ways you can be uh, looking for that sort of thing. Um, I mean, I, I guess, uh, one thing we're doing is we're integrated with Secretary of State databases so we know whether the company is actually in business or not, uh, or they've they've gone bankrupt. Um, uh, we can also, you know, you can also detect financial problems where if companies aren't paying their taxes, uh, th those can show up on uh, 
on government tax authority watch lists. Uh, there are also, you can require your suppliers to upload financial statements or in other cases, public statements are available. Um, news monitoring helps with that. Uh, and then you can integrate, there, there are some services like Rapid Ratings is the one that's probably most known for uh, creating uh, financial risk scores associated with private companies. So we can fold that data into the, into the scorecard as well. Cedric wants to know more about how you're monitoring overpayments or refunds to ensure that they're not fraudulent activity. Yeah, so there can be fraudulent activity associated with, with an overpayment and, and a refund refund process. Um, there, uh, let me just think about the, we have a comprehensive fraud risk monitoring uh, solution that is looking at unusual activity on suppliers. And, you know, the kind of the tricky thing about fraud is lots of times the fraud is being perpetrated by an insider or in collaboration with an insider. And those insiders know what your controls are, what your standard controls are. So with our fraud solution, we're looking at a, a lot of different attributes that by themselves don't indicate fraud, but um, maybe if there's enough oddness going on, you know, enough of the the individual flags are, are flipped. It just lets you know, hey, I, I need to take a look at this supplier a little bit closer. Maybe, you know, a bunch of controls are just being skirted. And uh, so that's the way the fraud scoring works. It, it looks at a lot of things like we use a, a solution called Benford's Law. Uh, there's a, a, a model called Benford's Law that's built into the solution. And we compare the invoice numbers and invoice amounts, the actual digits that are in those numbers compared to what uh, the Benford's Law would predict machines would produce versus what humans would produce. And if there's an anomaly there, we flag up the supplier as, as suspicious. If transaction ch history changes over time in a way that suggests something unusual is going on that fits a pattern of fraud, then we flag the supplier up. Um, those are those are just some of the examples that we uh, that we use. And and uh, also just as part of our recovery audit work, when credits are, are coming up, we're we're communicating with the supplier and uh, the AP departments to I identify when this activity is happening um, at, just to confirm the legitimacy of these different sorts of transactions. So I don't know. I'm not sure that that was a perfect answer, but it's one I gave. It certainly was thorough. <laughs> of all the areas of risk you've described today, Danny, which area do you believe by and large AP departments are least prepared to fight against? Well, um, I think the one cyber risk is the one that's impacting supply chain the most. And, but I think AP departments probably need to be spending a lot of their time focused on fraud because that's what AP departments have been hit with the most. And, um, the, the thing, the area of fraud that they're most vulnerable to is cyber related because What's happening, the, the frauds that have been getting through the most over the past couple of years have been cases where the supplier's email system has been compromised and the fraudster is then hacking the supplier's legitimate email account and sending a what looks like a legitimate email to the AP team to get a bank account changed. And uh, so I would say it's that combination of supplier cyber risk monitoring and fraud that AP departments need to be worried about most.
That will be our fun word. Danny, thank you so much for an excellent presentation and for sharing your insights with us today. Thank you all for taking time out of your busy days to join us. And with that, I'm going to hand it back to Kelsey, Ms. Kelsey. Thank you, Mark. And I just have a few housekeeping notes to go over before we officially close out today. If you could please fill out the short evaluation form that will appear once you close the webinar, this will help us better serve your needs in future webinars. And as a reminder, the on demand materials will be emailed to everyone within 2 business days, and this will include a PDF of the slides as well as the link to the recording of today's presentation. And thank you again to Danny and Mark for a great presentation today. And thank you to all of our attendees for taking the time out of your busy days to join us. This webinar was brought to you by IOFM and sponsored by Apex Analytics. Thank you all and have a great day.